I am working on this little applique quilt um, and I'm putting rays behind the applique so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how I do this uh, doing a background fill around the applique this is a simple background fill because it's the easiest to stitch out the fastest to stitch out um, rays are great as are echoes for doing background fill so I've got this one block left to do <clears throat> So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to um, mark this block, the outside, that will become my clipping block. And then I will mark around the applique, that will become my no sew zone. So if we go up to the screen now, we can start that process. I've already told IQ where the quilt is and that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a block. Add edit block, add block, standard block. I'm not going to define it as a clipping block right now. I'll do that later. Standard block. And I'm going to choose trace on quilt because I'm actually going to stitch in the ditch manually whilst IQ records the block. So I'm going to choose trace on quilt. My motors have lifted because I prefer that when I'm tracing. I'm going to change my machine dial to regulated stitching. I'm going to move my machine to where I want to start and I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread and then I'm going to set my needle down so it doesn't move. Then up here at the screen I need to remember to touch start or else IQ won't record anything. So I'm going to touch start now it says it's recording, so any time now when I move the machine, it will record what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start stitching. Now, my arm may come in front of the stitching. Um, I can't help that. I need to be accurate. So here we go. Doesn't matter if I pause. I, IQ doesn't care about that. It will just keep on recording. It won't remember the pauses. It will remember where I'm stitching. And I press these seams towards the sashing so I'm stitching on the white fabric. This is pretty straight, so I don't need to use a ruler. But I, I didn't feel confident I would. Okay, here I am back at the beginning, and if you look up at the screen, there's the block traced out. Now I have to remember to touch stop so that I can move my machine, cut my threads. <clears throat> I'll cut my threads. Okay, I told it to, t to stop, but if you look over here I've got these choices I obviously didn't stop right back at the beginning I've been given these choices I'm just going to tell it to close the block now it's done now I'm going to touch finished and I get this prompt which says do you want to add another block and I do because I need to stitch around the applique and that will become my no sew zone so I'm going to choose yes Okay, so again it says touch start when you're ready to record. Now down here, 
at the uh, child, I'm actually going to stitch around the arm and then go around the outside. Now I don't want to record this, I only want to record around the outside. So I'm going to start here, I'll stitch around and then when I get back to here that's when I'll start the recording. So let's start here. Okay, again I might come in front of the camera. Okay, now here, now that I'm here, I'm going to just stop my machine so the needle's down. At this point, I'm going to hit start, so it will start recording now. I'm just going close to the applique. I'm going to use my guide just to help. Okay, and here we are back at the beginning. Turn my machine off. Um, I'm going to tell IQ to stop. Again, I've obviously not gone back exactly to the start, so I'm going to hit close block. And now I can hit finished. Do you want to add another block? No. Okay, so at this point now I'm going to cut my threads. <coughs> at this point too, I'd usually sew in those thread ends, but I'll just bundle them together for now. Okay, so now we're going to put the uh, we're going to put the raisin as the background fill. Up here on the screen you can see my applique and my uh, outside, the outside of the block. So at this point I'm going to add edit pattern, add pattern, uh, no, let me go back, copy pattern, beg your pardon, because I have the rays saved on my screen uh, up there. 
saves me how, when I do that. If I keep a clean copy of the pattern I want to use on the screen, I don't have to go back to the catalogues to collect it again. It's right there. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'll bring it down and I'll zoom in again so I can see the whole thing. Now, I can move those rays wherever I want. I could have them centered on the center of the block. I actually chose to have the center of the rays over the child's shoulder. So in order to find that place, I'm going to move my machine so the needle is kind of centered over the shoulder, middle of the shoulder, okay? And up here on the screen, you can see the green crosshair showing where my needle is. So I'm going to move, my move is still highlighted, I'm going to move the rays kind of close to it. And instead of having to carefully, carefully try and move it into place, all I have to do is touch this needle button, which is snap to needle. And the rays will oh, well, snap. Oh, Didn't have it close enough. We've got to have it fairly close, and then it'll snap to it. Did you see that happen? Okay, good. So now, now it's attached to my needle, is that pattern, is that um, reference point at the center. I can actually move that anywhere I want. I don't want to. I want to keep it right there. Okay. Now... Uh, I need to, because the rays don't extend over this part of the block, I need to scale them up. So I'm going to hit scale and I'm going to just drag them out. Now the next thing I'm looking at is where the rays uh, hit the outside edge. I really don't want one hitting in the corner. I'd rather not have that. So I'm just going to touch rotation and I'll move it around. Now I'm also looking at where the lines cross the applique um, because like here for instance it's very very close to the uh, uh, to what will be the no sew zone so I'm going to actually move that again a bit more um, yeah I kind of like that I like the way it's going I like the way it is now these these rays will stitch in from the outside they'll be double stitched they'll come in out around in out around and there is a post at iqdemos.com which show, tells you how to create this pattern if you want to create it for yourself. So I like the way those rays are, so I'm going to hit finished. Now I need to get rid of this excess and I need to create the no-sew zone. And those are blocks, so this says add edit pattern. I don't want that, so I'm going to hit finished. Add edit block add block, clipping block. Now it says please select the patterns to be affected by touching one of their points. It's the rays. They turned red. Continue. How do you want to define the block? Well I'm going to select existing block and it will be this one. And now IQ has cut off all those extra rays. Okay I like that. That's satisfying to me. So I'll hit finished. I was going to think for a little bit. Uh, now we have to deal with the transition. The transition is what is IQ going to do at the edge of the block? And right now you can see green lines there, which means jump stitch must be selected. And here transition type, it says jump stitch. I don't want jump stitch. I want it to be continuous. So I'm going to hit the plus button. That says tie off. And I can tell it's tie off because of the blue lines. And now it's continuous. Okay, so now um, it will stitch the rays in, out, across the edge, in, out, across the edge. Okay, accept, that's good. Do you want to commit to the transitions? You'll not be able to change them later. Yes. If I didn't like them, I would touch no. If I really didn't like my background fill, I would hit cancel and it would get rid of the clipping block that I've just done. So, I, but I'm going to touch yes. Okay. So now we, need, now, now we need to define there's no sew zone. Again, it's a block. Add block, no sew zone. Please select the patterns to be affected. Again, it's the rays. Continue. Select existing block, and this time it's the outline of the applique. Continue. And now they've all gone from inside there. Okay, finished. It's going to take a little while to think after I've hit finished. Um, there's a lot of information there it needs to deal with. Okay, now this time, I do not want continuous. 
because for instance here it would stitch down, it would stitch around the edge of the applique, down, back, around the edge of the applique, back. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to change my transition type by hitting plus. That says jump stitch and I like that. Okay, you see the little green lines that indicate the jumps. It says there are 12 total jumps. Okay, I'm going to go accept. Do you want to commit? Yes. Okay, now I actually don't want those jump stitches and there are some little tiny bits of rays that I'm not even going to bother to sew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them. So this is added it block. No, I want to split the pattern. So I'm going to hit finished here. Add edit pattern. Split pattern. And it says touch the desired splitting point. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I just have to touch, I'm getting rid of the jump stitches, I just have to touch the green line somewhere. Split. Because this is a double stitch, so I've got to touch it twice. Split. This one, split. This one, split. This one, split. This one, split. Okay, now let's pan so I can get the rest. This one here, split. Split. Now oh, let's just pan around to see if there's any more. No, that's all of them. Okay, so these little short ones, I'm not even going to sew those. That one and that one, that one and that one and that one. I don't even bother telling IQ to sew those. I've done all my splitting, so I'm going to hit finished. So now I'm ready to sew. So let's zoom out a bit so we can see the whole thing again. Slightly. There we go, that's better. Uh, so I want to find sew quilt. Don't see sew here, so I'm going to hit finished. Here's sew quilt, touch it. It says select the first pattern to quilt. And it will be, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because there we go. Um, it will be this up here. That's where it starts. Continue. I'm touching the edge the pattern at the edge at the clipping block because then I'm sure I'm catching them all uh, rather than touching the lines. Continue this one, continue this one, continue this one. Uh, and that's it, that's all of them. Notice there's still some blue ones, I don't care, I don't want those to stitch so I'm not even going to select them. So now we will go sew quilt. IQ will move to the starting point, bring up the bobbin thread. Now I have to set my dial on my machine to uh, manual, which I think was about there for my, the stitches I want. Manual or stitches per second on my IntelliStitch. Um, I'm going fairly slowly. If you look up here, you can see my speed is 0 0.8 and my details is 0 0.6. I probably wouldn't need to really go that slowly, but um, I'm going to just so that it's more accurate. Basically, I'm not caught out like going too fast. Sometimes you watch a machine moving and it's kind of worrying because it's going so fast. So we'll hit start and then we can watch it sewing. goes in and out. Having it the, the raised double stitch like that means I have got no transitions at the applique. I'm using micro quilter thread so it's fairly fine. So you can't really even tell that it's double stitched. As it's stitching, of course, the fabric is shifting, so I'm just going to make sure it doesn't stitch onto the sashing by gently holding back the fabric here. Uh, 
That's another reason to have the IQ moving slowly, so I've got chance to uh, move the fabric if it looks like it's going to stitch over it. IQ and no doubt other computer systems do raise so well. I mean, I couldn't, if I was using, doing this manually, trying to hold a ruler at these angles, my lines would not be this straight. fairly thin batting, I'm using warm and natural for this. If I was using thicker batting, um, I'd have to pay more attention to the holding the fabric out of the way because the quilting would draw up the quilt a lot more. <laughs> All these appliques are identical. Um, I can't just copy a clipped pattern and put it behind it because you know the placement of the applique may be slightly different, the applique itself may be slightly different. So it's best to actually always do the uh, tracing or the marking of each block and clip and uh, the raise for each block individually. Since I was stitching in the ditch manually anyway, um, it made sense. It didn't take much time at all. And I, you'll notice I'm just stitching right over the uh, fishing line, which is a, a bit of hand embroidery.
where it is finished. Um, now, I've got double stitching around the edge here on my clipping block. Uh, I could choose not to stitch in the ditch first because the rays would do the stitching in the ditch, but doing the stitch in the ditch first kind of stabilizes the quilt. It means the fabric isn't moving around as much. So that little bit of double stitching at the edge doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, the rays are all double stitched anyway. Uh, the reason, another reason I went so slowly is because my machine uh, vibrates. Uh, if I get, if I turn my dial up to here, it has a vibration. So if I have IQ going faster, I need my dial at a higher speed, and sometimes that hits the vibration, um, you know, the harmonic vibration point. Um, so I have to go a lot faster to get past it. So that's another reason why I went slowly. So there you go, uh, there's a background full of rays behind applique.